pause now and let the sight of this sheer cliff become a priming place which lifts you off to speculate what if, what if, what if. What if? asks Andrew Motion's poem, inscribed on the Sheffield Hallam University building overlooking the city's Victorian railway station. It's the same question being asked by the students inside, many of whom are trying to do something almost unheard of in British politics, to oust the leader of a major party from his own seat. In 2010, Liberal Democrat leader Nick Clegg won his Sheffield Hallam seat with a majority of over 15,000. Yet polls now suggest the seat is in play. Three surveys from the Conservative peer and pollster Lord Ashcroft have given Labour a narrow lead, though a more recent one by ICM suggests the Deputy Prime Minister will cling on. If he does lose it, it would make Mr Clegg the most high-profile victim of the 2015 election and a poster boy for the risks of going into coalition as the junior party. Mr Clegg has held this seat in the prosperous west of Sheffield since 2005, having taken it over from the previous Liberal Democrat MP, Richard Allen. Mr Allen won it in 1997, one of a sea of safe Conservative seats swept aside by the Labour landslide victory. Since 1997, first Mr Allen and then Mr Clegg have consolidated their position, turning Sheffield Hallam into a safe Lib Dem seat. They've been helped, in part, by an influx of students and public sector workers. Unfortunately for Mr Clegg, these are exactly the kinds of voters who are now turning their backs on the Liberal Democrats. Melissa Dewis, a mother of four, teaches psychology at one of the local schools. Like many young professionals here, she voted for Mr Clegg last time, but is unlikely to do so again. It just wasn't something we really debated. We were just always Lib Dem voters um, and we like Nick Clegg. What's really changed since 2010 is that the coalition government, it felt that he kind of went in to this coalition government more for himself and he sort of forgot those pledges, he forgot those promises. It was almost like, well, now I'm there, I've, I'll ignore the things I said to get me here and I'll just kind of support whatever the Tories are asking me to do. Between 1998 and 2007, the number of government employees in Sheffield increased by 55%, more than in any other British city. They now make up 24% of voters in Hallam. And if public sector workers who have found their jobs and pay squeeze during five years of coalition austerity are difficult for Mr Clegg to win back, then the students will be even harder. They now account for 17% of the constituency's electorate, and many have not forgiven the Lib Dem leader for raising university tuition fees soon after joining government, just months after promising to scrap them altogether. Students certainly haven't forgotten about Nick Clegg's betrayal. Like, talk to any student in Sheffield, pretty much, and they'll say they, they hate Nick Clegg and they, they kind of despise what he's done. Um, and that he is a symbol of kind of um, a broken kind of political elite, I guess. Despite the chance of a political decapitation, Labour is playing this contest down. Party apparatchiks insist they have little chance of winning and have only recently begun to put serious resources into the campaign. Oliver Coppard is their candidate, a young local former activist. But his biggest problem is convincing voters, who have long thought of this seat as a Tory Lib Dem marginal, to take his chances seriously. He talks more of being hopeful okay. than confident. Okay. Right, listen, if you've got any I think I've said from right from the beginning that you know we will do our very best and we'll work as hard as we can, and that it's possible. And as we get closer to May seventh, I look at you know the number of people that we are getting out, knocking on doors, the number of leaflets that we're delivering, and the goodwill and support that we're getting when we do go out and speak to people. And increasingly, I think that this is certainly a fight that we can win. Mr. Clegg paints a complete contrast. Leading the party's national campaign means he is on the road more than he is in his own area and often has to dash back to Sheffield in time for a weekend of campaigning. In elections, you never, no one has any right to win a sort of North Korean majority. That's the whole point of a democracy, that people will vote in different ways. But I'm very confident that I will be returned to Parliament, partly because I think, as I say, most fair-minded people acknowledge that I've tried to do the right thing through thick and thin, through very difficult circumstances, that I've done a lot of good things for the local area, whether it's bringing money in to resurface the local roads and pavements, money into local schools, more apprenticeships than ever before. Do you know what, in Sheffield now, because of the reforms we've introduced nationally, there are now fewer young people who are NEETs, not in education, employment or training, than since records began. 
Outsiders often assume that Hallam is as labour-oriented as the rest of Sheffield, an industrial city once jokingly known as the People's Republic of South Yorkshire. But the Conservatives held this seat at every election from 1918 to 1997. Inside the grand townhouses that characterise much of the area used to live the managers and owners of the steel factories that once made the city famous, and they could be relied on to turn out for the Tories in their thousands. Hallam remains a well-off area, and having lost the support of much of his base, Mr Clegg is now relying on the Tory activists and supporters against whom he used to fight so hard. He has even persuaded John Harthman, a former Tory candidate here, to back him publicly. This policy is proving successful, with the latest ICM poll indicating a surge of tactical Tory voting may just save the Lib Dems. I was quite pleased with the influence that Nick Clegg had brought to the uh, coalition. I, thought, I think he's been very brave in standing up to his critics and I wish Cameron would stand up to people on the right of his party uh, as well as Nick Clegg has stood up to his internal critics in the Lib Dems. Uh, and I just very much fear that with, without the steadying influence of the Liberal Democrats, a Conservative government of its own would go too far to the right. It would be too focused on the southeast of England. Over the past few months, we've travelled across the UK. On the East Coast, we've seen how UKIP's lack of on-the-ground organisation could cost it in the seats it most wants to win. In Scotland, we've seen the SNP surge is real and it is damaging for Labour. And in the South West, we've seen how the Lib Dem MPs most likely to cling on are the ones who've most successfully detached themselves from their own party. And here in Sheffield, we've seen the person who could be the face of the 2015 general election. If Nick Clegg loses his seat here, he will go down as the leader who tried to persuade Britain to love coalitions, but ended up being thrown out by his own voters. Kieran Stacey, Financial Times, Sheffield.